Yeah. Hi. Hey. Yeah, it's us again. Oh, I like the red curtain. You ah, do? and then you see the beach. <laughs> yeah, this is a live shot from our beach in Fort Lauderdale. So welcome to What Does This Button Do? It's episode number 243. Okay. All right. It's an educational show, and I am Jim, and she is Chris, and we are going to do it. Reminder to click the bell, subscribe, do all the things, like us on Facebook. If you see us there, we should be doing all of those things. All right, Chris, big screen TV in the living room. Well, this this episode is about the big picture of Google Photos. And I just want to start with something that not everybody knows about, but that we just love about Google Photos. And that's that it plays our photos on the big screen TV and on all sorts of other screens in the house. So here's, here's a little video about how that works. Okay. Good morning, Jim. Ah, good morning. <laughs> I would like you to show our viewers how we watch our photos on the TV all day long. Okay. It's tough. I know. Remote. One button. Wow. Look at that. Yep. All I have to do is turn on the TV. Oh, that was three years ago. That was Easter Sunday. Easter Sunday sunrise because we had... We went to the Grand Canyon because we had to get our van fixed. <laughs> <laughs> These are great pictures. So yeah, we even we use this kind of as a memory test too. So where was that, Jim? This was on the Mississippi. Oh my, this is but from you were in Turkey. This is from nineteen ninety nine and when mom and I were on a boat in Turkey. Ah. Ooh. <laughs> See, I could do this all day. This is so much better than anything it is. on TV. It is so much better. But what if you did want to watch TV? What do you do? Well, you just have to change the input. Yeah, but you have to push the right button. <laughs> What's this button do? <laughs> okay. All right. So now we're watching TV. Yep. All right, so what if you're done watching TV, do you turn the TV off? I never turn the TV off anymore. I just put it onto the, onto the setting that is the pictures. And we have this in, on this TV, on our kitchen TV, and it's even available upstairs in our bedroom TV. And where are these pictures coming from? I mean, are you, are you se secretly clicking on your phone here to make these pictures happen? All of these pictures are stored in Google Photos and we choose which albums we want to see. And we can change that or we can just let it, let it go with a huge album. It's, it's just so much fun. Oh, time to take it off. <laughs> ah, we're back. That was the end. Oh. <laughs> Well, and one thing to mention on this, because Google Photos is in the cloud and we have it set up to display recent highlights on the TV, we have we don't have to do any after it's set up. It's a set it and forget it. Now, when we come home from a trip, as soon as we walk in the door and turn on the TV, we're seeing photos of our recent trip and it's just so cool yeah and, and it's not just the tv i have a google hub it's a screen next to my bedside on the bedside table so whenever i just roll over wake up in the morning i'm seeing beautiful pictures of our travels and it just makes me feel so good <laughs> okay great where are we? Okay, it's time for this. Hi, everyone. I'm Jim, and here together with my wife, Chris, we are Geeks on Tour. Do you think your smartphone is smarter than you? 
and you have questions about your Android phone or your iPad tablet, and how do you learn about these amazing devices? Well, we are geeks, <laughs> also known as propeller heads. Oh, oh, oh. No. No. <laughs> no. And we are geeks who teach. So we think the best way to learn is in small pieces on a regular basis. So we came up with this YouTube show where we pick a topic about current technology and go into a little bit of depth. All of our content is collected on our geeksontour.com website. Please visit and check it out. So Chris, where are we now? We're home. No, not, not traveling at the moment. At the moment. And we just had Hurricane Ian go right on by us. Yeah. A few other people had to go right on by them. Yeah. Too. If you were affected, though, our, our hearts go out to you and, and whatever we can do. If we can do anything personally, let us know. It did major damage on the southwest coast of Florida. We are on the southeast coast. The week before the hurricane, we went out kayak diving, our favorite thing to do. We actually paddle out in the ocean with our kayak gear, go diving while we tow the kayaks behind us. And he got a couple of lobsters. I did, yeah. So we'll have lobster. They're in the freezer. The tails are in the freezer. (laughs) Okay. And I see Sue ask, how did you set up the show to your TV? And does it only show an album? It shows whatever albums you ask it to in your Google Home. Now, you do have to have a Chromecast enabled TV. And we have other materials on our website about that. Okay. Let's see. I want to say hi to our our folks that we know. Okay, Ron. Hi. Hi. Another Ron, <laughs> favorite Sunday show. And Ian, yeah, we're glad. <laughs> we are very glad that Ian passed us, Ian okay. passed us by. Yeah, Jack Wilfor, good to be here. He is curious. Why, why some people should not use Google Photos. Well, stay tuned. We'll I'll, get there. I'll, we'll get there. Yeah. yeah. You, you're right. All right. Still raining in New Jersey. I'm sorry, Chuck. We sent... Ian up there to visit. <laughs> it was Peggy's in Phoenix. Okay. Jack is in Hilton Head. And they got passed by. Detlef, hello from Chicago and not Berlin. Well, welcome hey. to Chicago. Yeah. Visiting family, I expect. Good to see you. Honey Bert, another somebody from Hilton Head area. Okay. Richard, Monrovia, California, not Canada. And Jalen, it's so good to see you. I hope you're feeling better recuperating. Ian passed you by. Good to, good to know. Hey, Jimmy Lyon from LBI. Hi, My Jimmy. Old stomping grounds. Oh, his picture there, a couple of lobster that we caught together, together. here. <laughs> okay, Richard wants you to feel better. Jalen and Easy with the photo <laughs> app on my TCL TV. I have five TCL TVs. Wow. Yeah, that's not over doing it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, cool. Thanks. Oh, Maurice says that I honored him last Monday showing naming the face photo the Maurice bug. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and still haven't heard anything on that. You know, rattle my cage, so I'll rattle their cage. Okay. Yeah. Rainy PA, yeah. Do you have a Chrome what? Chromecast. Chromecast. You need to have a Chromecast. It's either a little device that you plug into your TV or a smart TV that comes with it built in. Chromecast. Bill and Karen, Debbie Diver from Sebastian. Very cool. Monday, naming the face photo and the Facebook. Yeah. 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 Okay. Okay. Uh, One thing I didn't mention. So... One of the side benefits of using Google Photos is the ability so easy to have it displayed on your Bing screen TV. Another benefit is if you make an album with your photos in Google Photos, you can get one of these books printed just with a couple of clicks. I mean, I know there's all sorts of photo book websites out there, but you have to upload your photos, choose them, arrange them, since all your photos are in Google Photos, 
it's just a couple of clicks to get a book made. And I love my photo books. Also, canvas prints. So I have this canvas print made and it's up on the wall and I just love it. And once again, just a couple of clicks and, and some money, but they're more, they're less expensive than most options. Okay. That's it. I just, I forgot to mention that when we talked about <laughs> when we started. Okay. <clears throat> I want to remind folks about our backstage pass, and that's coming up right after this show. We'll go on a Zoom call with our premium members. So that's a big benefit of premium membership. Become a member today. It would be a good thing. We would appreciate that. All right. So Chris specializes in Google Photos. Maybe you knew about that. And she has written the book, Learn Google Photos. She has one right there for you. And you can get that on Kindle? I, Amazon. Just go to Amazon.com and search for Learn Google Photos, and you'll find both the printed book and the Kindle book. So what makes Google Photos so great? <laughs> I've been using it since it came out, and I take more and more and more and more photos. And the wonder of Google Photos is that without any effort on my part, it takes all the photos I take with my phone and uploads them to my Google Photos account in the cloud. All the work is done for you. Okay. And that, and it's not just your phone. I mean, that's the main thing. That's where I'm taking pictures today is with my phone. I take a picture, it goes up to Google Photos, but I've also done a little bit of work to get all the photos from my computer, from my old hard drives, from my old backup DVDs, and collect them all in one place. And there's a video on this. Oh, okay. Six, 635, one home. So just a little visual example of this is Chris Howard with works. Geeks on Tour. And in case you don't know, I'm a big fan of Google Photos. One home for all of your photos because it's in the cloud. In this little video, I want to give you a short visual representation of why I think Google Photos is so special. If you're anything like me, you have photos all over the place. You have photos on old phones. You have photos on old computers on their hard drives. You have photos in old cameras, lots of camera cards around. Maybe you've put some onto CDs. And then there's just all the photos that we take with our phones. Well, Google gives you storage in the cloud for all of your photos. It's not just anywhere in the cloud. It's your account in the cloud, private for your eyes only. It is under lock and key with your username and password. So what you do is you just start uploading all of your photos to that account. All the old photos from cameras, from CDs, from computer hard drives. How about thumb drives? How about CDs? And then of course, all the new photos you're taking from your phone. Once they're all collected in the cloud, Google just waves its magic wand and now they are all in date order by the date taken recorded on the photo itself. Let me show you what this looks like then on a phone or on a computer. So this is my Android phone and there is the Google Photos app. And here's pictures I just took with this phone today, but I can go back, grab this little button, Notice the dates go by. I can go back to 2004 and you know that this phone did not take these pictures. I am seeing all of the photos in the Google Cloud. All I need is a connected device and the Google Photos app logged into my account. So here is my iPad. There is Google Photos. It's looking at my same account. I can tell by the little account button in the upper right. 
And same thing, I could go all the way back to 2004 or, or before and look at all of the pictures that have collected in my Google account in the cloud. On a computer, you don't have an, an app or any piece of software. You just go directly to the cloud using a web browser. You go to Photos, or if you're on a Chrome browser, you can click on these little dots here and go straight to photos. You need to sign in with your account, but the next time you do this, you probably will already be signed in like I am. I see that that is my account, and here are the same pictures that I saw on my phone and on my iPad. And here are the same dates. I can go back to 2004 or beyond and see all the same pictures that are in my Google account. Google Photos, one home for your lifetime of photos and videos. And the main point with Google Photos is that once you have your settings done, it's just a set it and forget it. It's automatic. The dedication in the first page of my book says, for all those lazy people like me who want the benefits of a lifetime of organized photos without the work. That's the beauty of, of Google Photos. Next, so now once they're uploaded, it is one giant stream of all of your lifetime of photos arranged by date taken. So if, and your, your cameras usually, digital cameras all stamp a photo with the date it was taken. So that is how they are ordered. No matter when you upload them, they go in order of date taken. Even when you upload from your computer or from old CDs, there are no folders, no subfolders, no tags. Everything is automatic by Google's artificial intelligence. So that's what people who are very accustomed to making their albums, renaming their files, having them organized on their computer, they're the ones who won't like Google Photos so much. But those of us who just take thousands of pictures and want them all organized automatically, this is the way to go. So once they're uploaded, I mean, that's step one in any photo organizing class you would take. Everybody agrees that step one is to get all of your photos in one place. So Google does that very easily. But then it's amazing how they are all organized for you. Number one, they're in date order. So if you're looking for a photo, a particular date, that's easy to find. You just scroll back to that date. But then there are automatic groupings. One of them now is best of month. And I'll show you that in a second. You can search for anything and Google Photos will find it for you. There are automatic albums for memories for people, places, things. And now there's a relatively new one for documents. Then there's semi-automatic albums. By that, I mean you have to do a tiny bit of work. So favorites, all you have to do is say, is click on the star on a photo and that makes it a favorite. Then all your favorites are collected. So it's for so much fun to explore and be entertained. So let me show you what I mean, I'm going to, I'm going to use my <laughs> Samsung phone here. There we go. Oh, and I forgot. This is a, uh, this is about photos, right? So I have to take a couple of photos that I will use. Okay. That I will use later. So I go into the camera of my Samsung and here, hold, hold my cute little uh, Android guy. <laughs> yeah, first, first from the front. 
<laughs> oh, because you can't see him here. Yeah. He's green. Oh, you okay. Didn't... Well, I take a photo of him and show me his little backpack. It's I love so it. Cute. Yeah. Uh, okay. So I just took a couple of photos with my Samsung Android phone, and we will look at those later. But first, I want to show you how Google Photos has organized my lifetime of photos. Now, this is a Samsung. There is the Samsung Gallery. If you start using Google Photos, stop using Gallery. Use Google Photos. All right, so there are the two pictures that I just took of Jim. And if I scroll down, you get this little button and it slides all the way down. I can go back to 1890, just like that. And I have probably 100,000 photos in my library. I just went straight to 1890 in a second. Now, how did I get a picture of my great great grandfather? I think it's something to do with a time machine that you have <laughs> stashed back there. Well, this was obviously a printed photo in an old family photo album. I just took my phone and snapped a picture. It gets uploaded to Google Photos. I changed the date from the day that I snapped it to the date that I'm pretty sure it was taken, around 1890. Okay. And a couple of things, just when you're looking at this grid, you can pinch the screen. Pinch the screen, and each time you pinch, they, the pictures get smaller until you're just in these little squares grid, which is viewing by month. So now if I scroll down, you'll see all the photos in the month until we get to a break where there is the next month. And notice this best of August. August, we were traveling. So I took a few hundred pictures. Instead of showing you those few hundred, here is 30 highlights that Google picked out for me. Best of August. And I can just go through them and show you my best of August pictures. We traveled to the UK. <laughs> and there was Stonehenge. And it's, there'll be videos in there too, right? Movies and move things. And videos, exactly. Thank you. I always say Google Photos, but it's really Google Photos and videos, whatever you take with your phone. All right. So I can scroll back, and it always drops me off at the beginning of a month. So here are 30 highlights from the best of August 2016. So Google Photos does your organizing for you. Then you can search for anything else. So for example, they're in here by date. So I could scroll back to 1998 and July 4, which was when Jim and I got married, <laughs> or I could, I, just, I could just search for, and it likes months in three letters. So I'll say July 4, 1998, and done. And there we are. These are all the photos from July 4, 1998. Notice that a couple of them have stars. If I said July 4, 1998, favorites... then I will only be seeing the starred ones, the favorites. Just so easy. But let me give you a couple other examples. I can search for beer. I like beer. <laughs> uh, you will f there are a lot of photos <laughs> of us with beer. Told you. <laughs> but you're not limited to that. I can say beer in Belgium. And sure enough, I will just be getting beer that where we took the photo in, in Belgium. Or how about waterfalls? Here, 
here are both photos and videos of waterfalls, but I just want to see my best ones. Favorites. Anything that I have starred and that has a waterfall in it is now showing up. What about places? So here, there's, there's these four buttons along the bottom. Photos means just your whole library of photos. Search means just that. Then there's sharing, then there's library. Under search and places, there's a map. So I can, I can zoom out by pinching the screen to see the whole United States. Then I'll zoom in to South Dakota where I know Mount Rushmore is here somewhere. <laughs> Rapid City. And yes, I could have searched for Mount Rushmore, but I wanted to show you the other way of getting there. And I think it's probably that. Nope. All right. Where's Mount Rushmore? It's near Rapid City. There it is. So I can see on the map the colors showing that there are photos there. Then at the bottom, I see the actual photos and they're arranged by date. So I can see that we were at Mount Rushmore in 2013 and in, we took a lot of pictures there in 2013. <laughs> <laughs> we were also there in 2011 at, and we were there Yeah, well, that's crazy horse, but nearby in 2000, hmm, well, I thought we would see the ones in 2004 as well. All right, we were there in 2013 and 2011. So it's organized by place and by date, and you can find your photos on a map. How about people. So when you click on search, the there's a row here of people. I can tap view all and any of these people. If I want to see all the pictures I have of Andy, I click on Andy's face and I see all the pictures. What if I want to see all the pictures of Jim? I click on Jim's face and I see all the pictures of Jim. But I don't want to see just pictures of Jim. I want to see pictures where Jim and I are in the same photo. So here's my little face and it says plus. If I tap there, I am now only seeing pictures where both Jim and I are in the picture. Obviously, there's going to be a lot of those. <laughs> so I want to just see my favorite pictures of Jim and me. You tap this little filter guy. And then favorites. So now I'm seeing just the best pictures where Jim and I are both in the picture. All right. That's just none of that took any work on my part. I did not tag any of those pictures. In fact, you can't tag any pictures yourself. It's all done by Google's artificial intelligence. It sees what's in the picture and it groups them accordingly. But it is just so much fun without doing any work to see all your photos and be able to view different, different pieces, different collated pieces of your, of your life all automatically for lazy people. Hello, Chris. I'm in the process of switching to a replacement phone. Uh, Galaxy Note 10 Plus. <clears throat> yeah, I'm glad I have all my video photos saved in Google Photos without a doubt. Very good because, yes, when you switch phones, all you have to do is install the Google Photos app tell it your account, 
you have all your photos because they're in the cloud. Yeah, yeah. So how do you change the date assigned to the photos? Um, okay. Let's just pick any, pick a photo, any photo. Okay. And when you swipe up, you see the date and you see a little pencil. So I can tap that pencil and change the date to whatever I want. So when I snap that photo of my great grandfather, it got a, a 2020 date on it. I edited that date to make it 19, I mean, 1890. Okay. Next slide. Uh, okay. So what's the, uh, I want this to be the big picture. So what, what happened? What was before Google Photos? Before Google Photos, all your pictures were on your computer. If you didn't have your computer, you didn't have your pictures. They were on your computer. There, in those days, your job was to copy all the photos from your phone or your camera to your computer. You had to decide what folders to put them in. How to, are you gonna have folders by date or are you gonna have folders by place? Are you gonna have subfolders? It got to be a mess if you didn't have a good system. You would also want to rename your photo files according to some kind of system. Tag photos with all the categories. So if you wanted them to show up with travel or with mountains or with waterfalls, you had to put the word waterfalls in as a tag. Decide which photos to share and then upload them to a photo sharing site. Since Google Photos is all in the cloud, they're already shareable. And then back them up that you had them on your computer, you wanted to back them up to some external device, a hard drive or a DVD or something. So that's before Google Photos. Then came Google Photos. It stores all your pictures in the cloud. Number one, that's unlimited storage, right? I mean, you will run out of space on your computer or on a hard drive eventually. You will never run out of space on the cloud. Now, you will have to pay a little bit for that space, but you'll never run out. So with Google Photos, your job is you don't have to do any work to upload your photos, but you do have to check. You have to verify that they got uploaded. I hate it when I hear people say, I got a new phone and I installed my Google Photos and there's nothing there. They never checked that they actually got uploaded. There's a couple reasons for that, and I'll show you. Then if you want, you can separate the best from the rest just by tapping the little star and making them a favorite. Or if you want to do a little bit more work, I'm one of these. I do like to make albums. Very easy to do. But then, then when I took... 150 photos at Stonehenge, you know, I added just a half a dozen of those to my UK travel album. And third, you still do need another backup. You know, the language with Google Photos is that when you take a picture with your phone, it is backing it up to the cloud. Well, yes. But if you later delete the copy from your phone, then your Google Photos copy is your only copy. You still need another copy. The easiest way to do that is to set up a second cloud storage service, such as OneDrive or iCloud or Dropbox. Okay, so... Those three tasks, I want to show you just a little bit about what that, what that entails. So number one, verify that your photos did get uploaded. Okay, so remember, I did take a couple of pictures a minute ago of Jim. 
And I can see those. I am not going to open gallery. I'm going to open Google Photos. And here are the photos I took of Jim holding my little Android doll a few minutes ago. But did they make it up to the cloud? How do I know? The only way to know for sure is to go to another device. Go to uh, like your computer. And I'll let me do that. A device that didn't take the photo. This device took that photo. So that's why I'm seeing it. But if I go to my computer and I go to photos.google.com, I can even refresh the screen. The photo, the two photos of Jim holding the little Android doll aren't there. So what happened? Back to the phone. And the way to look is on your account button up at the top. Notice how there's a little up arrow. That's telling me that there are photos waiting to be uploaded. If I tap on that, it tells me waiting for Wi-Fi. Ah, I have my settings set to only upload using Wi-Fi. If Wi-Fi is not on, they're not getting uploaded. So I will turn Wi-Fi on and go back to Google Photos and notice now it's saying two items are being backed up. So that is your job to check. Usually you'll just check and everything will be fine, but you got to check. Once they are successfully uploaded, I can see them from any connected device. Let me get my iPad. So here's my iPad. I have Google Photos installed and it's set up to be viewing my account. That, that's me, Chris Gold. There are the two photos of Jim with a little Android guy. So that's job number one. If you use Google Photos, it's your job to verify that things got uploaded. Job number two is to separate the best from the rest. That's only if you if you want to. You don't even have to do this because Google has already given you monthly highlights and the ability to search for anything you want. But if you want to separate the best from the rest, the easiest way is with favorites. So I'm going to use my iPad for this because it's a little bit bigger screen. And let's say that, ah, yes, this picture of me at the beach getting ready to go kayak diving. I like that picture a lot. All I have to do is tap the star. Now that picture is a favorite. How do I see my favorites? I back out. I tap on search. Scroll down a bit. Favorites. Now that picture is in my favorites and I am only seeing my favorites of all my hundred thousand pictures. I'm only seeing about 1000 here that are my favorites. So that is separate the best. Now I also like albums, but we have whole other shows just on, on doing albums. And lastly, you do, need a real backup. You know, I, I, I kind of wish that Google didn't use the word backup. Yeah. You know, cause uh, it's misleading. It, yeah. It's uploading. You're uploading your photos to Google. You are making a copy, you know, so it is kind of a backup, but not really. Yeah. Once you delete from your phone or you get a new phone, your only copy of those pictures is Google Photos. It's so easy to set up another cloud storage and have it upload all your photos as well. So every time I take a picture with my phone, it's being uploaded, copied, uploaded to my Google Photos. 
it's also being copied, uploaded to my OneDrive, my Microsoft. I actually am also using Amazon Photos <laughs> and iPhoto for the Apple ones. So I have several copies. But you don't need to. You don't need to, no. But she you, does. You do need to make <laughs> one more. Okay. So those are those are the three jobs that you have if you use Google Photos. Yeah, let's see. How does Google's AI name the person? Surely you have to determine this separately. Yes, exactly. It does not name them. It groups them, and then you have to name them. So you can see your faces. You can see people's faces without their names until such time as you click the button that says name it. Okay, while you can't tag, you can describe in the info panel and search will find those words. Yes, absolutely. But it's not a real tag. Yeah. Not not like what we had in in PCs and earlier days. Changing the date on a set of photos that might not be appropriate at a certain date range to something like 1650 takes them out of the embarrassing moment in case you wish to share your albums. Uh, albums, it wouldn't be a problem. Could, yeah, you could change the date yeah. to something that's not really a date? Well, to, to something earlier. Oh, 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 yeah, 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 1890. Or you can put them in the archive. That's what the archive is for. Yeah, they won't show up. What's the difference between Apple iCloud photos and Google photos? That's a that's a whole other class. But I can I can show you, number one iCloud is only for pictures taken with Apple devices. That's the main one. I can take a picture with my Apple phone and it will go to Google Photos and I will be able to see it on my Android device. You have complete device independence if you're using Google Photos. If you're using Apple iCloud, you are locked into the Apple universe. Okay. And what about favorites? I think I think he, we covered that before. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And what's the best digital photo frame to purchase? I don't purchase photo frames. I purchase the Google devices, the Google Home devices that have a screen and it's all built in to show your Google photos. And you can get different sizes of those. So and they do other things too. So yeah, if you just want a photo frame, then then maybe I don't know. yeah, yeah, there are some, but they tend to be overpriced. And most TVs, you could buy a a small TV and plug a thirty five dollar Chromecast into it, and have all of the all of the things there. If you remove a photo from your iCloud Drive or Google Drive, does it remove them from everywhere? Not from Google Photos. Google Photos is separate from either iCloud Drive or OneDrive or Amazon or Google Drive. But if you are on an iPhone or an iPad with your photos and you delete it from your iCloud, it will delete it from all of your iCloud devices. From all of your iCloud devices, your but Apple not from devices. Google Photos. Right. If It'll in still Google be photos, in your Google Photos. Good. Okay. How do you remove a photo from a person's album when it is in the wrong place? Uh, you select it, click the three dots, and say "remove from, remove from something, <laughs> remove from album." Okay. Nick's Play makes good frames which are Wi-Fi connected. You can upload them from a device or a computer to the Nick's Play cloud. So yeah, that's another cloud storage and display. Yeah, yeah, Nick's Play is a good one. Yeah. But why? I think Jimmy has one. Why? Those, when... <laughs> yeah, when you yeah. can do it this way. All right, just did a search for dog, and it didn't bring up the most recent photos of my dogs, but those from a couple of years ago. Hmm. I'm surprised, but sometimes it takes a little bit, you know? So what I find is that the more you work with your pictures, the more you bring them up yourself, the, the more that Google's automatic processes find them. But but I am surprised, it, it, it should have. Okay. All right. Yeah. So 
why so this uh, episode is about the big picture of Google Photos and why some people shouldn't use it. I want to show you a, I, I think one of the best ways to understand a product is to talk to the people who created the product. And I had the opportunity to do that a couple of years ago. So I'm going to play you just a little part of an interview I did with David Lieb. At the time, he was the product lead, lead for Google Photos. And he's actually the one that created the first iteration of the program. So he gives a good perspective. He's no longer with Google. Now he is in venture capital. He's mentoring other startup companies. And I envy those startup companies. This is a great guy. But let's hear what he has to say about why what Google Photos is for, the big picture. I think it also points out something that people in our generation need to understand is the importance of the artificial intelligence, the importance of the fact that you are building a tool that does the, man the photo management for us, mm -hmm. not giving us tools to do it ourselves. I mean, I field a lot of people's questions about how they want to be able to manually tag. They want to be able to make folders and make subfolders. And, and I say, well, then Google Photos just isn't the tool for you. It, Google Photos is intended to do it for you. What, what say you? Yeah, um, I think that insight is really important. Um, and when we looked at the market or the, or the space five years ago before we launched, um, we certainly saw some trends. And, and a, a couple of the trends were uh, that people were taking more and more photos and videos. Um, the, the explosion of mobile, the fact that you had a great camera in your pocket at all times, um, meant that people were going to take 10 times as many photos, maybe 100 times as many photos as they were taking previously. And we ourselves, um, as some of the folks maybe that were on the leading edge of that shift, um, we felt it ourselves. I remember uh, when we were working on Bump, I, on a, almost a daily basis, had to like figure out how to organize all my photos, where to put them, how did I like get them all into one place that I could access wherever I wanted. So we, we saw all these trends and we kind of projected out a few years and we realized this is gonna be a big problem for the world. Like people aren't gonna have a way to do this because the ways we were doing it, which you know many of you probably experienced over the years, you know, taking photos from your digital camera, uploading them to your computer, deciding what folder structure to place the photos in, um, we, we felt uh, that that process just wouldn't work. It, it would break down. It wouldn't be something that a billion people in the world would actually go do on a daily or weekly basis. So yeah, our, our approach was great. That's gonna have to go away and we need a better answer. And so our answer was just put all your photos into this space and let's let AI and algorithms help do the majority of that work for you. And I think uh, you know what we've seen is that that largely has worked. And I think what we are, you know, maybe now today, five years in starting to contemplate is to what extent should we try to go build some more of those features that maybe people want? Um, people who are maybe a little bit more tech savvy and a little bit have a little bit more time on their hands and actually want to put in that effort. We're going to try to find ways to build at least some of those tools for people. Okay, great answer. Thanks. <laughs> Yeah, I, I really did think that was a great answer that they it's the entrepreneurial spirit, see a problem and make something to fix it. And the problem was the volume of photos that we're taking these days and Google's ability to do all the work for us. But some people won't like that. And I call it, I've come up with this thing I call my IPO scale, inner photo organizer. So are you lazy with your photos or are you ambitious? If you are the ambitious photo organizer, it means that for years you have been copying your photos to your computer. You have a great folder structure 
method of organizing them. You have a great way of tagging them, renaming the files, and having everything organized on your computer. You won't be happy with Google Photos because it does not give you any tools for organizing photos on your computer. And it gives us very few tools for organizing, period, because it does it all for us. So if you're going to use Google Photos, you know, use it as it was intended is my, is kind of my message. And if by chance you're interested in seeing the entire interview of David Lieb, I thought it was a great, it was, it a, was. It was, it was an good. hour that we had him talking with our premium members. And I put the link to it in the description below this video in, in YouTube. Okay. <laughs> Definitely a lazy photo organizer. Yeah, really. I don't want to do all that work. But I do love my pictures. I want to have them. Okay. All right. So a couple of questions. If I want to put a short video on YouTube, I first have to download it from Google Photos. Is that correct? Yes. It there didn't used to be that way, but now it is. Yeah. There used to be a feature that you could go straight to YouTube from Google Photos, and it's not there anymore. Right. And let's see. Chloe, how can you check to see how OneDrive saves photos? Should I do internet only? OneDrive can synchronize to your local drive. Yeah, one of the cool things about OneDrive, if you want your photos on your computer, it can do that. But all I'm talking about is just putting it to the cloud because I never use OneDrive photos, but I know that they're there in case I mess up my photos on the Google side. All right. Has anyone asked about duplicates in <laughs> Google Photos? No, you're the first one. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> if, if, if you watch the full interview with David Lee, we absolutely talk about duplicates. Yeah. Yeah. There's a duplicate. The show is not official yes, or complete. Not complete. <laughs> I tell you. And you can email picture. Oh, the, the frame. Right. So true that. All right. But in the Google world, you don't even have to email them. I mean, if they're in your Google photos, they'll show up. Like I say, we come home from a trip. We, oh, we come in our house, turn on the TV. There we see our recent photos from our trip. It's so cool. Yeah. Bob says, so I guess that's a user interface. Had an update to Google Photos, but still don't have the new features on his Pixel 6. I know. Yeah, neither do we. No, it's rolling out gradually, less, less quickly than it seems to normally come out. It is on her Apple phone, her, so her iPhone. There is a new feature for the way to make um collages, collages especially you know now now this video we've only tiny tiny scratched the surface of what of all the details i mean look at this book you know there's a lot of details of what google can do one of the things is collages and they just improved it but most people don't have the improvements yet right and honey says that hers is not there yet too so uh, where'd I go? Uh, when you changed data on a photo, did you do that on the phone or on Google Photos? And does it matter? Doesn't matter. I did it on the phone using the Google Photos app. I could have also done it on the computer using the Google Photos website. If I delete a photo from my uh, from my phone, it's still in Google Photos. If I delete it from Google Photos, it also deletes it from my phone. Yeah, there, there are ways if you really, really try hard, but understand that Google Photos job is to collect all your photos in the cloud. Once they're in the cloud, it couldn't care less about what other devices you use to access it. So it's, it's counterintuitive to Google Photos to want to erase something from the cloud and yet still keep it on your phone. So no. No, 
Doesn't work that way. You can delete it from your phone and leave it in the cloud. If you use the right delete tool, make sure to read the chapter about keeping your photos safe before you do any deleting. Okay. <laughs> I want to suggest that if you do reduce the zoom to 50% on a web browser, looking at Google Photos, it's almost like a light table. It helps you move and organize pictures. And doing it on a larger screen makes it a lot easier, too, like a Chromebook or a tablet or an iPad. Yeah. All right. We have some questions for you. We do, don't we? Okay. So, well, did you learn something? All right. Google Photos stores your photos and videos in A, the cloud, B, your computer's hard drive, or C, your phone. A, the cloud. All right. Your Google account in the cloud for your eyes only. <laughs> Good point. Google Photos stores your photos in one giant stream sorted by A, date taken, date added, tags, or events. A, date taken. I don't have any information about that. Get over it. <laughs> <laughs> it is Google Photos' job to upload all existing photos from your phone. It is your job to verify it by A, viewing your account on either another device, B, calling Google, or C, asking Chris. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's B and C. <laughs> A, viewing your account on another device, just any other device besides the one that took the picture. If this device took the picture, then it's going to see it. Google Photos is going to see it even if it's not uploaded to Google Photos. True or false, Google Photos on an iPad can view pictures taken with an Android phone. Absolutely. That's the whole device independence. It doesn't matter what device you use, you have all your photos. Cool. The easiest way to separate the best from the rest is A, delete all non-keepers, B, mark your favorites, or C, make albums. The easiest way is just to mark your favorites. Just click that little star. A, a, a maybe better way is to make albums. That's just a little bit of work. Okay. So I want to remind... Wasn't there one more? Was there? Uh, yeah. Oh, true or false, Google Photos keeps one copy of your photos and videos. You need to make another copy to your computer and or another cloud service like OneDrive. True. That would be a true, true backup. If something, you know, you just, you never want to rely on just one copy of your photos and videos. Something can happen, even okay. to Google. <laughs> oh, I want to remind our premium members about the Backstage Pass. It's a Zoom meeting right after this show. I'll get it started right after this. And you can join us. You get the link that Chris mailed out in an email earlier. If you can't find that in your email, go to our website at geeksontour.com and go to the member login. You'll see the link there. Okay, sign up for our newsletters. They're free. We will not abuse your email address. Just go to geeksontour.com slash news. Do that. All the members get the latest versions of all the books, including Learn Google Photos in PDF format. So do all of those things. Chris, what's the web page that lists all of our YouTube shows? Geeksontour.com. And the menu item is YouTube shows. You'll see all 243 of them listed there. Wow. What's the web page that lists all of our recent newsletters? geeksontour.com and the menu item is blogs and news there you will see a listing of all i don't know thousand newsletters since 2007 they're all listed there mm -hmm. so why do people pay nearly 60 dollars a year to join geeks on tour our member benefits are the backstage pass the private meetings where you get to ask us your own questions access to hundreds of the show me videos and the ebooks including the ebook for google photos you get written notes from these shows 
And a lot of people join, become the premium members just to say thank you for all the stuff that we do for free. And we thank you. Indeed. So become a member, geeksontour.com slash join now. Backstage pass is right coming up. That's it for us. I'm Jim. I'm Chris. And we are Geeks, Geeks on, on Tour. Tour. And that's it for this week. Stay tuned for the next time.